I don't want to ruin anyone's childhood here, but either Rudolph was replaced after his first year, or he was a she. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault, and you're watching Animal Logic. Santa's reindeer, or caribou as we like to call them here in Canada, were either all females or very young males that were replaced every year. Unlike other deer species, both sexes of reindeer grow antlers. Older males' antlers fall off in early December, well before Santa comes around with his flying herd. The females, on the other hand, keep their antlers until early spring. Young males also keep their antlers later into the year, meaning that Santa either replaces his herd of reindeer every year, a chilling thought, or they're all ladies. Take that, patriarchy! There are many different types of reindeer, or Rangifer tyrandus, and they can be found throughout the Arctic, tundra, boreal forests, and really anywhere cold in Europe and North America. In A Visit from St. Nicholas by Clement C. Moore, the first poem to feature reindeer alongside Santa, the reindeer were described as tiny. If you've ever seen a reindeer, you probably wouldn't use that word. Reindeer weigh up to 180 kilograms or 400 pounds and stand up to 1.7 meters or 5.6 feet tall at the shoulder. Add their massive antlers to that, which can grow up to a meter or 3.2 feet wide and 1.3 meters or 4.2 feet long, and you have anything but tiny. The reindeer in the poem that pull Santa's sleigh were likely the Norwegian subspecies, the Svalbard reindeer, which were much smaller. They weigh around 75 kilos or 165 pounds and measure around 80 centimeters or two and a half feet tall. It's just so cute. Reindeer start growing those impressive antlers in the spring. The males use them for fighting one another to impress females. And since their mating season is in the fall, there's no need to keep the antlers around much after that. The females, however, keep their antlers, likely to give them a competitive advantage when scrounging for food for her and her baby in the winter months. When the males lose their antlers, the antlered females take the position as top of the food hierarchy. But this doesn't explain why females need antlers in the first place. One theory suggests that female reindeers grow antlers so they'll look like young males. Adult males will confront younger males as soon as they become a threat, potentially even pushing him out of the herd. This strategy is used by the mothers to confuse the adult males as to who the young males really are, buying some time for them to grow bigger before setting out on their own, thus giving them a better chance at survival and continuing the gene pool. A newer theory suggests that female reindeer have antlers because a large part of their habitat is open terrain, and they need those antlers for defense, much more so than, say, white-tailed deer, which live in more densely wooded areas. Reindeer are purpose-built, cold-weather survivors. Their coats are made up of two layers, a woolly inner layer and a long-haired outer layer made up of styrofoam-like hollow hairs. These trap warm air in and keep them insulated from the elements. Not only does this hollow hair provide warmth, but also buoyancy. Much of their territory is made up of rivers, and rivers need crossing. Lucky for reindeer, their hollow fur acts almost like a life jacket, and they ride much higher in the water than other mammals. Not only that, but they employ the same counter-current heat exchange system that ducks do. You can click here to check out that episode. You'll like it. Basically, the blood that is pumped into their legs is cooled by the blood returning from their legs. This keeps their legs at a temperature warm enough to not freeze, but cold enough that there isn't a massive heat loss. Also, their noses help keep them warm, by warming up the air when they breathe in before it enters the lung. They also have adaptive hooves. In the summer months, when everything is wet, their hooves are spongy, which gives them extra traction. But in the winter, when everything sucks and is frozen, the spongy parts harden and form a horn-like rim. Each hoof has four toes that they can spread out across the snow, like snowshoes, distributing their weight. The underside of each hoof is hollowed out, and they can use this crevice as a shovel for digging for food through snow. Possibly the most interesting thing about reindeer is their migration. In one year, they will travel more distance than any other mammal in the world. They will travel over 5,000 kilometers or 3,100 miles in a year, often covering more than 37 kilometers or 23 miles per day. Reindeer are quiet animals, and outside of mating, 
they don't make much noise. When they do vocalize, they use large air sacs in their necks that allow them to emit a hoarse rattling sound, which males use to deter other males, but females use it to tailor individual calls to their offspring, which they need because reindeer herds can be massive. In 2001, the George River caribou herd in Quebec, Canada reached 385,000. Unfortunately, that number has since shrunk by 81% to 74,000. This trend is sadly happening around the world, and the last three decades have seen reindeer number drop by 60% due to climate change and habitat loss. Let's save Christmas with a Christmas miracle! If we could all just be a little more conscious of our actions and their impact, I'm sure we could all make a big and meaningful change. It's all pledged to stop being jerks to the wonderful world we live in. This channel is part of Love Nature, and they just announced a partnership with World Wildlife Fund Canada for an initiative to raise awareness on Canada's water health. An issue that not only affects you and I, but also affects the reindeer that we spoke about in this episode. If you want to help, you should go check out their website by clicking here, or click on the link in the description. And hopefully, we can turn the ship around. I hope that you have or have had an amazing Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Yule, Festivus, St. Lucia Day, Flying Spaghetti Monstermas, Life Day, and all the others that I'm sure I forgot about, and a Happy New Year. So what animals should I check out next? Please let me know in the comments, and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every week. We're gonna be off until the 8th, but we're gonna be back with new episodes. Maybe bear organs will get a sequel, or clouded leopards might happen, or honey badgers. Stay tuned to find out. Thanks for watching.